Hey guys, got a couple of general questions regarding the understanding of physics. And I am pleased to announce them with Dr. Salman Safi. So let's get to asking my first question. Although I love physics, but reading it always sometimes confuses me, which in turn discourages me as well. Is this confusing for me, good or bad? <laughs> I think the first part of your question is very important. That is, you like physics. So I would say, it is your interest in physics that leaves you confused. And I assure you that this confusion will let you understand the concepts more vividly with the passage of time. Because my personal experience in physics says that it is my interest in physics that every time when something confuses me, that confusion compels me to read more. And reading more always, of course, benefit me. Nice answer. But this leads us to my second question. When can a person be really called a physicist? Okay. And my understanding, the answer to this question is very straightforward and quite easy. I mean, a person is said to be a successful physicist only when physics does refer from his or her behavior. To be more specific, I would say a physicist always looks around through the eyes of mathematics. Rephrasing it in another way, when one is capable to express his or her observation in the form of mathematical equations, or when a person is capable to extract physics from mathematical equation, he or she is then a true physicist. That's very nice, but um, most of my friends love physics, but aren't particularly good at it. So what do you have to say about that? The answer to this question seems a little involved. It cannot be answered so easily. As there could be many parameters behind the failure for being a successful student in physics. But to be very succinct, I would say majority of the students have not developed the habit of reading physics books. The students usually rely on reading short class notes or other traditional material easily available from the market. And if some of them even go for reading books, I have personal experience that they usually avoid to correctly understand the true language of physics. Oh, that's very strange. What is the real language of physics? <laughs> physics, in fact, reside within mathematical equations. In some cases, very simple, while in other cases, they are very complex in form. To my understanding, so far as one doesn't try to understand how to interpret a mathematical equation describing some physical phenomena, one cannot properly understand the physics behind that phenomena. In physics, one first visualizes a physical scenario, set up some initial boundary condition for correctly representing the problem, and then process a fundamental equation through a well-defined mathematical machinery and eventually analyze the final results for all the possible condition and then look for the physics within those final results. In short, mathematics is the language of physics. 
how can one adequately understand this language of physics? To me, uh, this capability and fit comes through years long training in physics. For example, all the courses offered at beast level or in peace program are theoretical in nature. Each course is based on a set of fundamental laws of physics which are expressed in terms of mathematical equations. This set of fundamental equations works as the backbone for the rest of the phenomena in the same field. One needs first to understand the logic behind these fundamental equations and get acquainted with the procedure of their application in different cases. The logic behind home assignment given to student in different courses at different level is to let them train for applying the basics equation of the relevant field and of course to understand the rest of mathematical machinery but unfortunately the students usually avoid doing these assignments themselves but usually prefer to copy and paste them from other students fellows or from the available notes which are generally known as solvers this habit of laziness or easiness limits their capabilities in understanding the actual theme of physics. Thank you Dr. Saab for this useful information which will of course be helpful in seeking our careers in physics.